to remove the screws that attach the railing to the house. And then I needed to cut out the railing where it was actually embedded into the concrete, which with the sawzall equipped with the metal blade, it wasn't too bad. Repeat this process on both sides of the entire and before actually installing the new railing, I resurfaced the concrete porch, and that was my previous video, which I'll link above if you want to check it out. So at this point, it's time to actually order your railing, and I'm going with the flat cool system from Lazada. And they actually reached out to me because they saw my back deck wire railing video, which I'll link there, which also used some of the So literally all I did was send them a picture of the porch. Here's like the actual picture I sent them with a couple dimensions. They designed everything, gave me this spreadsheet, which has all the materials listed and also has the links. First things first, we need to establish and mark the railing post locations, and you want to do this using either a chalk line or a laser level as shown. You want your post to be in a straight line. 
my quest to find the perfect diffuser channel, I stumbled across another product that I may even be more excited about. Enter the Muzada Edgelit Frosted Acrylic Aluminum Panels. In this brief video, I'll unbox, set up, and show you a few more pictures and videos at the end. So each box comes with two panels that are each four feet in length. I'll slide the acrylic out of the profile so we can get a closer look at the design. Now the LED strip will slide in here and when the frosted diffuser sits on top, the light will illuminate the material and create a perfect glow throughout. Next, you can remove the protective material that's on both sides of the acrylic. For the LED strips, I'm going to be using some BTF lighting WS2812B pixels that have 100 LEDs per meter. These lights work perfect and they're the ones I recommend using for this product. And to get the full smooth neon look, it is recommended to use something that has at least 90 LEDs per meter, which is why I'm using these instead of my usual ones that only have 60. Now since the panels are longer than the 1 meter length that the LED strips come in, I'm going to solder some together so everything matches. Now I like using my own 18 gauge silicon wires, so I'm going to be cutting off the first and last LED to get rid of the ones that they come with. So here's my finished strip. I soldered my own wires to the front and back, as well as added about 21 additional LEDs. I won't go over step by step on that process since I already made a how to solder video that you can watch that walks you through in great detail on what I just did. Now that our strip is ready, you can insert it into the channel at the bottom and feed it through to the end. Once the strip is in, you may be wondering how to get the adhesive off the back to make it stick. While it is possible to do, I recommend just leaving it on. The end results all look the same and in my opinion it's just not worth the time. Now all that's left to do is slide the diffuser in place. One thing I do want to mention is if you end up installing these somewhere that's going to typically be below eye level, make sure you flip the panels around from what you're seeing here so that the LEDs are on top shining down. And if you put them somewhere that will typically be above your eye level, have the LEDs at the bottom shining up like they're positioned now. As far as controlling the lights and getting everything hooked up, I'll be using WLED installed on an ESP32 board. I'll leave links in the description to a couple videos I previously made going over step by step.